Okay, in question 233 we are asked to find the power supplied by both of the sources in this silly circuit here. So uh, there's sort of a series of steps that we go through to solve a question like this. Um, and the first thing we want to do is say what am I being asked? And usually you do that by just writing down the question. This is the question. Okay, those two questions we want to answer. Um, how do we? What's missing? So how do we solve those things? Well, at its base we need to use p equals i v, or using Ohm's law we could rewrite this as um, v squared over r, or I squared over or times R. Okay, so we need to be able to solve one of those three equations. Then we have to ask ourselves should I use KVL or KCL? And in this uh, it's very straightforward because there is no node pair. We see a bunch of resistors in series and so we immediately think of using the KVL. Um, and then we want to think of can we reduce this using an intuitive method? And we certainly can. Um, the resistors could all at, be added together and the voltages could be combined as well. Um, paying attention to the polarity. So this one being larger, this will be the polarity that's maintained and uh, we'll just subtract the 6 volts from the 12 volts. So really quickly, using an intuitive method, I would just say that this was a simplified version of the circuit. 4 plus 2 is 6, plus 6 is 12, plus 6 is 18, so we get 18 K. 18,000 ohms. So that would be our equivalent um, circuit and from there we could solve the question uh, relatively easy but if that is at all confusing we want to remember that there is a formal method that we can use to solve this once we've determined KVL um, we can uh, use the volt use the loop to solve the problem but to do that we have to label the rest of the diagram so, um, you know, going back to our formal method, the next step would be to label diagram with whatever is missing. And to solve this circuit, remember that the current is constant, and we have our uh, ohmic values for the resistors, but in order to use the voltage law, we need to be able to talk about the voltage. So we need a current to multiply by the resistance to talk about the voltages here. So we have to determine which way the current goes. And we could arbitrarily choose the direction, but where this one is such a simple circuit, um, let's just figure out which way it goes. So this is a smaller voltage, this is a larger voltage, and so this one's going to win. So the voltage always comes out of the positive terminal of the source. So we could draw our voltage like that. And now we need to use passive sign convention to make sure that we label our um, resistors correctly. Passive sign convention, we know that the resistors are power absorbers and that power absorbed is generally a positive value. So if we're going to go around, if our current is, needs to, our current then needs to be coming into the positive side of each of these. So we'll label our circuit like this. And now we could determine our loop. And initially I tend to go clockwise, but um, now that I see that the current is going uh, counterclockwise, uh, I'll just choose the counterclockwise loop. That way I don't have to think about negative current. So we'll start down here in this corner and we'll just say um, 
3ki because we're going through the positive, then we're going through the positive, 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 here we go through the negative, so on and so forth around. So we get 3ki, oops, lowercase i I guess, plus 3ki plus 6ki plus 2ki minus 12 plus 4ki plus 6 equals 0. And I could then combine all of the um, values with i together and pull the i out and I would end up with 18k. And then this would be negative 6. Okay, so I can see how I have the same values here for this circuit. Um, but now that we have this form of the equation, uh, we can just use this to simplify. So we get i equals 6 over 18k which is the same as one-third of a milliamp once we reduce that. So now we have everything that we need to know to solve these two questions up here because we can plug in IV into our circuit. So um, the current flowing in this circuit, remember it's flowing that way, I equals one-third of a milliamp. Um, oh wait, sorry. <laughs> I actually need to come up here, right, because our task is to evaluate the power um, supplied by these two circuits here. So remember that passive sign convention. Well we can use that on both of these. So what I'm going to do um, down below here is just draw them kind of like we used to see them in chapter one. There's a blob which is the rest of the circuit and then there's this thing and our current is flowing, um, in this case, in the first one here, it's flowing into the positive terminal. So we get I going into the positive terminal. Okay, and that tells us that the value for I, uh, the, I'm sorry, the value for the power will be power equals one-third of a milliamp times the six volts, which equals two milliwatts. So that seems like it would be our answer. However, we were asked for the power supplied, and that's power absorbed. So this is actually negative two milliwatts. And we could do the same thing for the other one, where We have the rest of our circuit. We don't really care what's going on in there. And label it plus minus. And then we'll just go up and look at that circuit and we'll inspect it. The current's going to the left here. So the current is entering this uh, element through the negative node. So it looks like this and it's not following the passive sign convention. So we would get, uh, we could either flip the polarity and change the sign of the voltage or flip the current and change the value of the current. It doesn't matter. We're going to end up with a negative value. We're going to end up with you know, negative one-third milliamps times 12, which will give us uh, 4, negative 4, which that 
you, according to the passive sign convention, tells us that negative 4 means 4 milliwatts uh, supplied. So when we're asked how many are supplied, that's actually a positive value. Okay, so those are the answers to that question. And so you can see that we were able to make use of um, some intuitive processes in putting uh, together a solution for this uh, question.